All right. So, um, you've probably seen all the videos around uh, on the Firefly, and uh, I noticed that uh, those who are doing the videos do a really great job of saying, "Wow, what a great job they did in building this instrument! It's in really, it's a really good, well-built instrument." But none of them really tell you about the setup or how well it, they actually made it to be a playable instrument. <clears throat> like, did they keep the scale correct? Did they have the intonation right? Uh, things like that, the action right. So I thought I would take time and, uh, and go over that. Um, I've been building guitars as a hobby for quite a few number of years. <clears throat> so I thought, wow, I'm going to check this out. So. I actually picked up this guy, this is a 2018 model of the Firefly, and the first thing that I did on it, and which you'll notice right away, is I replaced the pickups, because the two pickups that were in there were just horrible. I mean, they are so mic uh, microphonic uh, that you could, you, you could talk into it like this and it would pick it up really well on the amplifier. So, um, so that was the first thing that I changed on it. But, let's start from the top and work our way down and I'll tell you some of the things that I observed, first of all. Um, first thing is, I hear people say, oh, this is an ES-335 copy of a Gibson. Well, actually, it isn't. And I know they've come out with a couple different types in the last few years with the, the upper bout uh, uh, horns looking a little different. So these, if you notice this, is kind of got a sharp turn here, not rounded like an ES-335. So this upper bout is more of a copy of uh, an Ibanez um, Artcore type. But what's different is that the F-holes are not anywhere in the same position as an Ibanez or an ES-335 Gibson. They're down here, if you notice this, little, this part where it starts, it's about in line with the bottom of the pickup. Whereas on an on a ES-335, that hole is up here closer to the top part of that pickup. So they've shifted that off a little bit. Same in this side here. This bottom hole uh, circle of the F hole is like right dead center right here. And, and on an ES-335 it's up somewhere in here or something. So anyway, they're just shifted just a little bit different. And, and I guess they've tried to do all this to make it so that it's not a lawsuit or something. So they look like they combined a couple different kind of guitars. But, uh, and then the, the uh, the headstock sort of has, it looks like they took an Ibanez and they sh rounded, knocked off the little whoop de doop that they do on that um, and changed that. Um, the tuners, almost a dead knockoff exactly as an Artcore Ibanez tuners, so that's probably what those are. Um, the neck is really pretty thin, it's uh, really actually quite nice, it's like 43 millimeters. Uh, pretty much an Ibanez. Um, the fret dressing, I thought for sure it'd be rough and I'd have to dress them up, but run my fingers up and down, it's really smooth. And I got my, my uh, jeweler's glasses on and I got down and looked really close. It's really actually really, I mean there was a couple of them I might do a little bit of filing on to smooth them a little more. But other than that, they're, they're great. The um, the action height of the off the the fret is right on dead nuts right on what it should be for like a Gibson setup. Um, so the intonation. So I got my my calipers out and I measured comparing to my actual Gibson uh, SG the distance from fret to fret all the way down 22 frets and it is exactly the same as the Gibson. So, uh, and actually it's the same as I have a Hamer. It's a uh, same same scale at 24.75. So they were right on that. Didn't make any mistakes there. Um, I was really surprised. The switch I thought would be a really crappy cheap switch. I took the switch out and looked at it. It actually looks like uh, a switch craft or the type that go in Gibsons. Although I noticed after I put it all back together again and I started playing, there's a, there was a slight buzzing going on 
and I'd have to jiggle this the, the switch and get the buzzing weird distortion to go away. So I need to look at this switch again. Maybe I messed it up, or it's just really actually the crappy switch or something. I may have to replace it. Um, all right. So the pickups I actually replaced with GFS uh, guitar fetish pickups. This is like a Dream 90 or Mean 90 uh, single coil, and this is their Fat Pat. Um, you know, they're okay. They're, they're not bad, but for the price, I mean, it's like 50 bucks worth here, and it's far better than the pickups that were in there. Uh, the pots are kind of cheapies, but they don't make any squeaking sounds, squawking, making noise like that. Uh, they had some, some name I didn't recognize on the back of them, but they'll do fine for for now. The uh, the jack here it seems kind of odd, but when you plug in, let me see if I can plug in here makes a funky weird thing and I may have to end up changing it. So you plug in the, the jack and it goes in and locks in. Okay, but you see how it popped right back out a little bit. It didn't like want to go all the way. It's kind of weird, huh? So that can cause some problems. Um, the, uh, the bridge, okay, so I thought for sure that the uh, intonation would be all messed up, would we need to be set up. Nope, exactly dead nuts on. Every single one of the strings were exactly uh, intonated perfectly. I didn't have to make any adjustments at all to to the saddles. Uh, kind of just blew me away. Um, so whoever built this, they knew what they were doing. Um, I'm assuming this is probably being made through a, a plant that makes other guitars for like big name brands like Ibanez and and so on. Um, so the same luthiers are are making this. So anyway, so there you have it. Um, it plays real nice. Like I said the action, everything's real good. You know, it's like really close. There is a slight buzzy buzzy thing going on the G. You can hear it. Um, I gotta figure that out. It's on the saddle or something. I need to. I've had that out before on guitars, uh, on that G. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, other than that, I think it's a pretty nice guitar for the money. Holy smokes, you know, $140. The, the workmanship is amazing, like every peop other people have said. So, I don't know how they do it. But, um, it's not, you know, Certainly not a Gibson or even an Ibanez or any of the other name brands, Epiphone, but it certainly plays fine. Um, the, oh, I do want to know this is the difference between the big guys' name brands and these cheap ones. Is on the front there is some. If you look through the lacquer, you can see like there's three little scratches in down in there. So when they were sanding it, they put some scratch marks, maybe with their rotary sander or something. And they didn't bother getting in there and actually sanding out those and those little scratches out, so they just lapped her over it. And so now you see these embedded streaks, like somebody's three claws went like that right across it. Uh, so, yeah, so that's one of the differences. And you know, if it was a Gibson or something, they wouldn't allow that out the door. So, but hey, who, who cares? Gives it some character. So there you have it. That's my quick review on it. Uh, <laughs> well worth the the money. All right, thanks for watching. Neck position.
Thanks, guys. Enjoy.